What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the video, make sure you leave a comment. I promise you, today's video is going to be real and it's going to be raw. It might move people, man. It might make you think about your life, or it might not. And like we always say, man, you're the author of your own story. But as we do this video, we're going to play another video as part of my video, right? And when I play that, I want you to think about your life. I want you to think about what you're doing right now in life if you're on the wrong road. But more than anything, I want you to think about what a man is. What is a man? What is an adult? What is a woman? To me, a man should be able to make his own decisions, right? Be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it. If you're hungry and you want to open up your refrigerator, you should be able to just go over there, open that thing up, grab you something to eat, and get you something to eat. If you want to use the bathroom or you need to use the bathroom, you should be able to get up and go use the bathroom, right? But what happens if you're locked in a cell, man, and you got to take a shit and you ain't got no toilet paper and you tell the cop, hey, man, I need some toilet paper. The cop says, yeah, all right, I'll be back next round. Next round, the cop walks by. And those of you that have been in prison, you've experienced this. Hey, 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 what's up with that toilet paper? Oh, uh, man, I forgot. Got you on the next round. They do this to you two or three times. And finally, <laughs> there's nothing you can do. You got to take a shit but you ain't got no toilet paper. What do you do? And for those of you that haven't been in prison, I'm going to tell you what people do, man. Sometimes you got to use your t-shirt, man. Rip up your socks. You got to use whatever you got because you can't get no toilet paper from the police. That's the small thing, right? seems like a big thing, but really it's just a small thing. What happens when the cops bring a dude to your cell? And we talked about John Powers and that other crazy dude with all the tattoos on his face. What happens if they bring that dude to your cell and you say, I ain't taking that dude. What happens when that happens? And the cops say, you know what? You don't want to take them? All right. I got something for you. And they want to cell extract you. And then they want to four point you. Do you know what four point is? Think about that because you're going to see it. You're going you're gonna to get to see what a four point is. You know, a lot of people that, you know, are new to the whole prison genere or whatever the hell you call it, you might not know what a four point is. You might not know what it's like to be cell extracted. You might not know what it's like to have seven, eight, nine, ten men rush into your cell with helmets on and body armor, slam you on the ground, put their knee on your head, push you into the shower and hold you there with a shield after they got done spraying you with mace. You know, a man should never have to experience something like that. A woman should never have to experience something like that. At least not in this country, right? This country, the home of the free and land of the brave. You know, they wouldn't do stuff like that in our country, right? And some people might be watching the video and say, you know what? Sometimes the cops got to do that stuff. They have no choice but to run into a cell, tackle a dude, you know, spray him with mace because this dude's out of control. But what happens when it's just something so simple as, man, I'm not taking that dude as a celly. Well, why not? I don't know, because the dude's biting his fingers off maybe? Maybe I don't want him in my cell. You know, John Powers bites his fingers off, drills holes in his head with batteries, cut his Achilles tendon out, cut his scrotum, cut it, took one of his testicles out. You want that dude in the cell with you? Not really. And you know, all that tough guy shit will go out the window, man, I promise you. Because when you get a dude like that in your cell, man, if he jumps on you or he's just having a bad day, and some of these guys are absolutely nuts, they could just be having a bad day. Guess what? Might be your fingers that he's biting off today, right? Crazy. Come on, Chad. Biting his fingers off? Read about him, man. Google John Powers. I did a video on him. Tattooed his whole body with an ink pen and a razor blade while he sat in the ADX for 10, 15 years. And they bring these dudes to your cell and they want to put him in there. Do you guys remember I talked about Soldier Boy? I wrote about Soldier Boy in the book. Wrote about the other white dude that used to scream all night long, Martin. And they want to put Martin in a cell with people. He's throwing... Feces all over the wall, screaming, yelling at 2, 3 in the morning. Nah, I don't want him in my cell, officer. Well, why not? <laughs> why would you even ask me a question like that? Well, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take you out of your cell. We're going to cell extract you. And you know, the cops can get real nasty. I got some SEALs that write me on here, man. Say, hey, Chad, man, what's up? I got federal agents that write me. Hey, you know, I, you know, come on the show. And, you know, I'm not going to talk bad about all cops, but I'm going to tell you right now that in the BOP, you're going to get to witness it, right? In the BOP, man, they do nasty stuff like this to people, man. 
They, they jump on you. They'll chain you up for days, man, for weeks, four points you. Oh, they don't do that stuff no more. The hell they don't, man. I've seen it done. I've seen it done. And, you know, the cops will pick at certain dudes. I think it's funny, right? You get people like Martin. They want to harass him on the door, bang on his door, rile him up because they're bored. You know, sometimes you got these young kids, man, that end up working in these prisons. And sometimes you got older dudes that are just ignorant, man. Sometimes you get ignorant and dumb people that work at these places. And they do things just to inflame people. And you know, years ago, they started shutting down a lot of the mental health institutions. And they started shipping these dudes off to prison. People like Martin. People like Soldier Boy. People like John Powers. They just ship them off. Instead of getting them any mental health treatment, they ship them off, send them to federal prison. And eventually they start bugging out in there. Send them to your local county jail. You've all seen it if you've been to jail. Might send them to your state prison. But really, they should be in a mental health institution. Well, let's go to Lewisburg, right? We're going to go to Lewisburg. This was a while ago. February 3rd, 2011, correctional officers at the Lewisburg Federal Penitentiary in central Pennsylvania arrived outside Sebastian Richardson's cell door. With them was a man looking agitated, rocking back and forth and staring down at Richardson, who at 4 feet 11 inches was nicknamed Bam Bam. The man officers told Richardson was his new cellmate. The two would spend nearly 24 hours a day cell together in a concrete room smaller than a parking space. So you're going to live with this dysfunctional human being in a room that's as small as a parking space at Walmart. Think about that, right? Not a whole lot of room there. And there's a toilet in there. And if he has to use the bathroom, he's got to use it in front of you. And then dudes will put like a blanket. Put that blanket over your head. You put the blanket over your head. Some prisons like USP Lee, the toilet doesn't flush. So if your cellies, you know, Doing a boom, boom, and a wham, wham. You got to smell that shit, man. The cops will come by and do rounds and flush your toilet. But he might not come for 30 minutes. So you got to sit around. Richardson, 51, didn't know his cellmate's name, only that he went by the nickname The Prophet. Linnell Gray, a former Lewisburg inmate, said The Prophet had a habit of screaming songs or shouting the spelling of words for hours as though competing in his own private spelling bee. Oh, I'm just now reading this article. This is the first time I read this. But this is the same thing that Martin was doing, the same thing that Soldier Boy was doing, right? There were also rumors that he had assaulted more than 20 previous cellmates. Here's the BOP, man, doing the best job they can, right? They're there for the safety and security of the facility. So if a guy's running around assaulting people, when do they finally say, you know what, dude, you scream all night, you yell out the alphabet, we can't put you with other people, so we're just going to sell you alone. When do they do that? Oh, well, we don't have enough cells available, so we're going to have to throw this guy in there. We're all out of cells. So we'll just put him in, you know, we'll double bunk him with this guy. While they got a guy down there that might have cursed out the staff member holding up a cell. You could have let that dude out. But instead, you want to take this dude and throw him into a cell with another man. Someone that's, you know, kind of all right mentally. Every cell he get, he always end up fighting. He was just crazy, Grace said in an interview. He's Lewisburg's weapon, former Lewisburg inmate Delangelo Moore said of the prophet. If he like you, he like you. But if he don't, he's your worst enemy. He was Lewisburg's weapon. What does he mean by that? Without me reading further, does that mean when the cops don't like you? They said, we got something for you. You asked me for too much toilet paper. You complained too much. You wrote up the staff. I got something for you. I'm bring old boy down here and let him scream all night. See how it works out. So when officers told Richardson to cuff up, put his hands through the food slot to get handcuffed and step aside to make room for his new cellmate, he refused. The details of Richardson's story are laid out in a lawsuit he filed against the Bureau of Prisons and the agency's response to that lawsuit and are reinforced by Richardson's letters from prison interviews with former inmates. So what does Richardson say, man? Richardson says the guards took the profit away and then returned 30 minutes later with reinforcements. Is that the profit? No, I ain't taking the profit. Oh, you're going to take the profit today. Oh, hell no, I ain't taking the profit. All right, don't worry, we got something for you. You've been to federal prison, you've been to state prison, you've seen this all the time, right? It's all too familiar, isn't it? They come to your cell, hey man, cuff up, we got a celly for you. Who is it? Oh, hell no, I ain't taking that, dude. Oh yeah, you are. They moved him to a laundry area to be strip searched and put in paper clothes. That's another one of their weapons now. Think about this, young man. It's freezing cold, man, you're in Pennsylvania in prison, right? It's cold as hell, man. They're going to give you a paper jumpsuit. I've been in a paper jumpsuit. I've had to wear one a few times. And USP Coleman, nothing nice. 
Nothing nice. And they give you a paper blanket, too. That way, if you get real cold, you can cover up with a paper blanket and warm up. They moved him to a laundry area to be strip searched and put in paper clothes. Richardson yelped in pain as they then placed him in hand and ankle cuffs, clicking them tighter until they cut into his wrist and Achilles tendon. A chain locked high on his chest in a practice known among staff as T-Rexing. Forced his arms into an awkwardly high bend and made it hard to breathe. Officers then walked him, haltingly, to a cell where another man was being held in identical shackles. According to inmates, lawyers, Lewisburg staffers, and more than 40 current and former inmates who made similar claims in lawsuits, court testimonies, government audits or letters, and interviews with the Marshall Project and NPR. Restraints are used as punishment at Lewisburg, often for prisoners who refuse their cell assignments. So if you don't want to go into a cell with this guy, or you don't want him in there with you, we're going to buckle your ass up, grown man. You don't get to make a choice. Prison officials say they try to match compatible cellmates, but ultimately inmates have no control over who shares their cell, even if guards place them with someone who has a violent history, is from a rival gang, or is suffering from severe mental illness. Severe mental illness, man, runs rampant in federal prison. At the end of the day, you don't really have a say-so, or do you? You could refuse a celly. He could walk in there and you could punch him in the face, get it right up. Then they might try to bring him again. But you know, the one thing that the BOP tries to do, right? They try to match compatible cellmates. Do they do that, Chad? They do. They do. But if they feel like putting a dude in there and you don't want to, guess what? It don't matter if he's compatible or not. It don't matter if he's a Sereno and you're a Norteño. None of that shit don't matter. If they want to put a dude in your cell, they're going to put him in there. And sometimes they want to put people in there to fight each other. I've seen plenty of times where they're like, yo, I've seen the cops at USP Lee come right up to the door and say, hey, I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to put this dude in here, man. He's a chomo. I want you to get him. I got it. Or, hey, man, I'm going to put this dude in here, man. I'm going to shoot you a couple extra trays, and I got you, man. Don't worry about no write-up. Because the cops will write it up, and I've seen this done. They put a dude in a cell, tell the dude, hey, man, fuck this dude up. They fuck the dude up, and then the cop writes the shot and says that he witnessed the mental health guy that's been pissing him off, screaming all the time, swing on you immediately. And you fought back. And then he goes and testifies at your hearing as a witness. That there was nothing you could do, and sometimes you beat it. There's really no such thing as uh, self de- self defense. But you know, the DHO that's hearing your shot, he's cool with the officer. <laughs> Trust me, man. It's a it's it's a family away from a family. They're all together, man. So they do what they want, when they want, how they want, right? If they try to refuse a cellmate out of fear, as Richardson said he did, they're locked into mental ambulatory restraints four hours a day. Four hours. Or days until they relent. Not four hours, four days. Until they say, all right, man, I'm sorry, man. Remember when you was a kid, your uncle might be playing with you or your dad's like, uncle, uncle. They want you to scream uncle, man. In your own way. Not literally uncle, but look, man, I give up, man. I, 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 you beat me. You, you broke me. And so many people get broken. Seven prisoners said that they were threatened with or subject to a punishment far more painful than the restraints. A form of punishment that at other prisons is used as a short-term last resort for uncontrollable inmates. It is known as four-pointing and consists of having each limb cuffed to a corner of a concrete slab or bed frame. Could you imagine laying there like that? You've got to defecate on yourself. You're forced to shit on yourself, piss on yourself. Sometimes you want to piss on yourself, man, because you're so cold you want to warm up. It's the only way to warm up your body is by pissing on yourself, man. Come on, grown man. You make your own decisions. You want to be in this position? You're a grown man. You got eight, nine, ten men grabbing you, locking you up, man, forcing you into a cell. Hang on. Don't quit watching the video. We're going to show a video inside of this video so you can see exactly what it's like. Exactly what it's like. (sighs) One of the worst things in the world, man, is to have a bunch of men, man. Four point you. Tackle you to the ground. Rip your clothes off, your butt ass naked, your things flinging around, and they're handcuffing you to a bed, man. Your ankles, your hands, and then they leave you, man. And for the first hour or two, you're so upset. You feel so sad, man. It's fucked up, man, to have a grown man to be put in that position, man. Straight up, man. You don't want to be in that position. And they do this for all kinds of shit, man. Richardson said in the lawsuit that he was freezing in the new cell 
and that the guards left the window open when they locked him in. They left the window open and put you in a paper suit. He said in the lawsuit that his paper uniform was no match for Pennsylvania winter air. It was soaked with urine. In restraints, he wasn't able to pull his pants down to use the toilet. Richardson's cuffs also made the top bunk an impossible reach. So when the other prisoner would take the bottom bed, Richardson did the only thing he could. He would curl up on the concrete floor. Guards came every two hours to check on him, Richard said in his lawsuit. They ignored his complaints. His hands swelled. He sold his clothes. His ankles were cut from the metal. Instead, they re reiterated his options. Be locked in a tiny cell with a violent man or cope with the restraints. So in this situation, what did they do at first? They just left him in restraints all day, right? They cuffed your, your hands and everything's cuffed here. Your ankles are cuffed. And you're in a cell with a chain on. You and another dude. You're like cuffed up. Or they go a little further. They four point you, man. Guards came every two hours to check on him. Okay. Instead, they re reiterated his, his options. Be locked in a tiny cell with a violent man. Or just deal with the restraints, man. Just hold it down. You got it. According to Richardson's lawsuit, he remained cuffed for 28 days. The Bureau of Prisons confirmed this detail. Is that chilling? The Bureau of Prisons confirmed that they left this man locked in chains for 28 days. You want to know what it feels like, man? Tie yourself up with a rope. If you got a job, go to work all week, and then Saturday and Sunday, just tie yourself up with a rope. You're not going to miss football this weekend. There ain't no more football. And spend two days like that. And then think about what it's like for 28 days to be handcuffed. You have no control. Can't wipe your ass, man. But you're a grown man. Remember in my book, Mr. Young said, it didn't dawn on me until I started to see things. He told me, he said, Chad, ain't no men here. Men make their own decisions. And he explained that you can't get nothing to eat if you're hungry. You can't wipe your ass if they decide to lock you in chains. <laughs> you don't want me to get into history, right? The special management unit where Richardson was housed was created in 2009 for dangerously violent, confrontational, defiant, and antagonistic inmates. Richardson was serving a 35-year sentence for drug trafficking, and he was transferred there in March for assaulting a correctional officer. His, his attorney said that he never assaulted the cop, that he intervened between a guard and another inmate. The aim of the SMU was to increase safety at other federal prisons by calling their most problem, problematic inmates and putting them through a three-step rehabilitation program. Prisoners are assigned a series of workbooks and journal entries to be completed and sells on topics like the con game, the criminal lifestyle, and anger management. That stuff's all a bunch of bullshit, man. Just so you know. At Lewisburg, the vast majority of those inmates are in double cell solitary house with another prisoner and cells as small as 6 feet by 10 feet for nearly 24 hours a day. You're going to coexist with this dude for 24 hours a day. The cells were originally built for just one person. There you go. It's supposed to be for one dude. Now they got two dudes in there. But officials doubled up the SMU inmates to teach them to successfully coexist. We're going to put you in this little ass cell, man, because we want to teach you guys how to coexist with another guy, man. We want to work on your character and your living conditions and, you know, how you deal with things. We're going to put you in this cell, man, smaller than your bathroom at home. And we're going to make you live with this guy. And every time he pisses, you're going to hear it. And that was something that used to agitate me, man. I don't know why. But when you're locked in a cell with a dude like that and they're pissing in the toilet, and you hear you hear the piss hitting the water. A lot of dudes will flush the toilet, but like I said, in some prisons, you can't flush the toilet. you got to listen to that shit, man. Double cells, it's pretty much common, right? Pretty much, it's, it's common in all prisons. But Lewisburg has added the danger of housing some of the Bureau's most volatile prisoners, right? Most of the federal prisons are double bunked. But now you get all the violent dudes and you put them all together. You say, okay, now we're going to double cell you guys together. You're going to be with each other for a long time, 24 hours a day. And let's see how it works out. It's an experiment, man. It's an experiment. It's like Mr. Wizard, right? They're experimenting on you. I've gone to as many as three, four cell, cell fights in a day, a lot more than you would at any other institution, said a current SMU correctionals officer, <laughs> who spoke on the condition of, and then he wanted to be anonymous, okay? Because he didn't want to lose his job. So they know that people are fighting every day, and yet they're going to bring this dude and say, hey, we're going to put you in here, man. You're going to go in here. Guards and SWAT gear are often seen running down the tier with pepper balls and handcuffs to break up brawling cellmates, including the prisoner who was found kicking a roommate lying in the fetal position, the prisoner who tore off half of his cellmate's ear, 
and the inmate who slashed his cellmate with a razor blade. But you want to put this crazy ass dude in my cell, and if I don't go, you're going to chain me up. Okay, I hear that. One of the lawyers said, I've been a lawyer for almost 30 years, and my clients have told me that Lewisburg is the worst place they've ever been. Lewisburg, USP Lewisburg, was it humanity's hell? That's what I was going to name my book before I named it Blood on the Razor Wire. Humanity's hell, you're tossed into this place where it's like a gladiator pit, man. And there's been plenty of people killed there. Plenty of people kicked in their head. Plenty of people, uh, there's been people that walked away, a guy I knew personally, man, walked away paralyzed. Dudes were jumping on his head. With no remorse, right? In February 2014, former Lewisburg inmate Royce Brown, we're going to watch his video in a second, who was sentenced to 20 years on drug and gun possession charge, said he has been housed with a gunner, someone who masturbates when women walk down the tier. During the 18 days they lived together, tension and frustration mounted. We were stuck looking at each other. It was torture just being in a cell with this dude, Brown said. Brown said that one morning his cellmate told him, we ain't going to live here no more together, man. This is it. I'm going to make him gas us. Make them gas us. Yeah, I'm about to make them gas us, bro. I'm going hard against the cops. And there's nothing you can do because you're stuck in the cell with me. So I'm going to buck the system. I'm going to go hard. They're going to come down here and spray us. And you're going to have to take the brunt of that right along with me. Because I'm deciding today that we're moving. This dude wants to masturbate to women. This dude don't want to live in the cell with him. Imagine that. You and this dude in the cell the size of a parking lot. And he's pulling his pants down. Masturbating to the women when they walk by. That's a gunner. Brown asked to be moved, but guards ignored his request. Brown knew the protocol. If he attacked his cellmate in front of correctional officers, they would be forced to remove him. I hit him a few times and I put him on the ground, Brown said in an interview. Now they have to separate us. Surveillance footage shows more than 30 officers ran down the tier as some shot pepper spray and pepper balls, small pellets that explode on contact, into Brown's cell to break up the fight. Brown stuck his hands out of the slot to be cuffed and was removed by guards wearing gas masks and blue and black sweatshirts that read, the Big House. Remember them shirts? The Big House. Remember I talked about this in another video where the cops wore these shirts. I'd rather live on my, I'd rather die than live on my knees or something like that. You know, they got these intimidating shirts like, we're, you know, we're the baddest motherfuckers here and we're going to do some shit to you and whatever, man. It's the impression at its best. Again, they forget that the punishment comes from the court, not from the cops, man. The punishment comes from the court. Well, you know, the prisoners act like this and they rebel and they do this. You know, maybe if you treated people a little bit better, maybe if there was some incentives, maybe people would act a little different. I can guarantee you this. You know, I was back in court and at that Oklahoma County Jail and in their state prison, they were allowing them dudes to order pizza once a month from like Pizza Hut or next month might be KFC. Let me tell you something. Food in prison is comfort. If the BOP was doing something like that, people would think twice about losing that privilege, man. That's a privilege that people wouldn't want to lose. I promise you that. Good time. If they really allowed people to earn their way out of prison, people would do a lot better in these places. It would be safer for cops, be safer, safer for convicts. <laughs> I tried to deal with this guy right away, Brown told an officer. His staff bound his limbs. Tears and mucus dripping from his face. He just got sprayed all in the face. Lieutenant, I tried to get you to talk to me, man. So you're like, yo, man, I need to see the lieutenant. I've seen dudes do this shit plenty of times. Remember Lair Dog? Sent him out there to kill or be killed. Hey, I'm trying to holler at the lieutenant, man. All right. Hey, man, I'm trying to holler. Three days later, I'm, I'm still trying to holler at the lieutenant. He'll be around. No lieutenant. So you got to take things into your own hands, man. And that's what he did. He took things into his own hands. And watch what you watch what they do to him. As guards chained his hands, ankles, and chest, Brown yelled out in pain. God damn, these are tight. I can't even breathe. So now the cops want to get nasty. You want to make us run down here? And they do that shit, man. Brown remained restrained for more than 24 hours after hitting his cellmate, according to prison records. One of several inmates he was shackled at Lewisburg. One of several times he was shackled at Lewisburg. A year and a half after coming home, he still has scars on his wrist and his stomach. The Lewisburg Prison Project, which has a two-person staff, received 962 letters from Lewisburg prisoners in 2015 and makes regular visits to the penitentiary. The workers often hear the same complaint. You are placed in a cell with shackles so tight. I've seen probably 30 guys at Lewisburg months later who have open wounds. This was a paralegal that used to go there. That's what he said. Many guys can't eat. They can't use the bathroom. 
<laughs> How are you supposed to wipe your ass, man, if you're handcuffed, man, for 28 days? And, you know, not to make this a joke or nothing, but <laughs> if you can't wipe your ass, you know, that thing starts itching, man. <laughs> Sometimes you got to smile to keep from crying, right? But you know what I'm talking about. There's been times when you didn't, you know, you know what I'm saying. But anyway, you know what? I'm going to read you a little more of this, and then we're going to go ahead and drop the video on here. Last year was a particularly violent one at Lewisburg. In August 2015, Jimmy Barker, serving a 13-year sentence for fraud, died after a fight with his cellmate. Bureau of Prisons documents obtained by the Marshall Project show that Barker had been in a psychiatric hospital three times and attempted suicide twice, but that a Lewisburg psychologist found no evidence of serious mental illness before placing him in a double cell with another inmate. So he's gone through all of this shit. He's really, a, a, you know, he's been to psychiatric hospital three times, but the BOP staff psychologist says, oh, no, he's good, man. Do we need a cell? Yeah, we need a cell. No, he's good. Put him in there. I'll sign off on it. And next thing you know, man, people are dying, right? 13-year sentence for fraud. He died. Dead. In October, Gerardo Archie Felix was killed by his cellmate. Archie Felix, 17, was serving a five-year sentence for attempted entry after deportation and had been at Lewisburg since April 2014. Oh, Archie left Mexico, came to the United States, got a re-entry charge, and that's what they do Like when they send you over back home. If you come back, they start banging you. I've seen guys with 10, 12 years for that. He's only got 57 months, less than five years. He ends up in Lewisburg, and then he ends up dead. He gets out. He doesn't do the five years. He leaves Lewisburg. What? Blood on the razor wire, right? He had tried to cross the border in 2012 to rejoin his family in Utah after being sent to Mexico two years earlier, try to get back to his family. Let me tell you guys something about a lot of the Mexicans that come over like that. You know, you hear this shit in the media, but a lot of them dudes, they are coming over here trying to make a better life. But check that out, man. Dude lost his life, man. We'll put a picture up of uh, old Archie, too. It's been more than a month I don't take my meds, he wrote in a letter to his daughter. I need my meds or I'll lose my mind. They, ha they haven't been giving him his meds? Because of his mental health problems and his five-foot-inch frame, Archie Felix was especially vulnerable to attacks from other prisoners. He was just a small fellow, right? My cellmate went crazy on me and started to beat me up while I was asleep. He is younger and taller and stronger than me. He wrote this to his daughter in November 2014. He often ended up in restraints, according to his family, for his erratic behavior. He told my aunt that he would be handcuffed on his ankles and around his wrists and they would be chained together. He'd be like that for days. Could you imagine being like that for days? So let's go ahead and catch the video real quick. Restraints, during the lieutenant's check at approximately 8 o'clock, uh, the inmate became disruptive and assaulted, and assaulted the uh, lieutenant while he's doing a two-hour check. Authorization for immediate uh, four-point restraints has been given by the warden. We will now currently place the inmate in the four-point restraints. Inmate Brown, do not resist my staff, so you understand. One at a time. Go ahead and turn the inmate's head towards the door. Walk forward, place him onto the litter. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, secure him on the litter with the straps. This time, team, move him to uh, X block basement. So, 024. The main ground, do not resist my staff as they escort you. Do you understand? Okay. Okay, this time, undo the straps for the litter. All right, we'll move the inmate on the Reeves litter to the bed. Inmate, get around, do not resist my staff as they move you. Do you understand? All right. Place the inmate onto the bed. Slide him onto the bed, center him in the bed.
Ready for the hammer strength, Lieutenant? Yep. I mean, Brownie, I was just my staff as a fly hammer strength, dude. Do you understand? Well, I have it. It was just. just it Good circulation. Another place of sheets in the end. Let me brown do not move while my staff exits the cell. Do you understand? Team out. I'm out. We're out. Three out. Two out. One out, through the door. Camera operator, step forward, get a visual to get me. Okay, the time is now approximately 8.18 a.m. Uh, we're currently in X block basement at this time. Once again, at approximately 8 o'clock, uh, Lieutenant was conducting restraint checks on inmate Brown, first name Ruiz. So now that you've seen the video, right, isn't it kind of like crazy to see a man going through that, screaming, yelling, looking for help, fighting? I guess some people do that when they're being beat. You know, they think they're fighting for their lives, man. You're giving it all you got. Imagine that. You're trying to pull your arm and bang, they got you, man. Bang, they got you. And you're, you're trying to fight the inevitable. This is what's going to happen. And there's nothing you can do about it. So think about that. You know, when you watch that video, were you thinking that, damn, man, this is not the life that I want? Were you thinking that a man makes his own decisions? Were you thinking that a man should never be put in that position where other men are stripping him and taking his will, digging into his soul and cuffing him to a bed? And then they lie about things too. And they'll say that you swung at him, that you tried to punch him. Sometimes they got it on video, man, and it turns out you never really did any of that stuff. This was just their excuse to be nasty, right? After seven days in restraints, Richardson, the prisoner who had refused to be sold with the prophet, remained determined that he would not be put in the same small cell with any violent prisoners. So officers tried something else. A team of guards took Richardson to a room, painted floor to ceiling in pink, a shade designed to soothe aggressive behavior. In the center of the room was a bed frame topped with a thin pad. As is protocol, guards laid Richardson on the bed and bound each limb to one of its corners. There it is. That was the video, right? That was him, man. He screamed out in pain as he was being chained down. Imagine screaming, hoping that someone will help you. But everybody here is against you. There's no one here to help you. You're in the Federal Bureau of Prisons. No one can help you. You're all by yourself. It's just you against them. There's two teams, man. Their team with 10 players and your team with one. They placed the restraints on me so tight, my hands had puffed up. Each finger looked like the Valisic pickles. That's a spelling's incorrect. Not the smaller ones, the medium size. He later wrote to Sprout of the Lewisburg Prison Project about restraints at Lewisburg. My wrists were so swollen, the cuffs were stuck in them. Imagine that. On March 2nd, 2011, 11, almost a month after Richardson had been cuffed, he agreed to live with any cellmate they gave him. They finally broke him. They finally broke him. Took 28 days to break his will. Took 28 days of him shitting and pissing on himself. Took 28 days of 
being cold. It took 28 days of the cold metal biting into his Achilles tendon. The cold metal from the handcuffs tearing at his wrist. How many times do you think he cried, man? And sometimes when I think about it, it does bother me, man. It does affect me. When I was in USP Pollock, I had a celly that wanted to go hard on the cops, right? He was from West Virginia. He wanted to go hard on the cops, man. And that's when I, that was the first time I experienced a paper suit. It was the first time I really experienced a real cell extraction. And it was the first time I was ever cuffed for hours upon hours and just left in a cell. And I can tell you that they handcuffed me behind my back. And they left me in this cell for, I can't even remember how many hours. But I, what I can remember is what my shoulders felt like, man. Being handcuffed behind your back like this for hours. And I'm kind of a big kid, man. I'm kind of a big boy, right? Shit was just digging into me, man. But what hurt most was my shoulders, man. My hands were behind my back. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't piss. And you know what, man? I'm going to tell you the truth, man. You don't want to know how I know how you warm up? I had to piss on myself, man. I couldn't use the bathroom. I couldn't get my pants down to use the bathroom. At one point, I tried to get the cuffs off me. I had no no handcuff key. You know, we can make hand. I had nothing. I had no way of getting it off. But I tried to push them down under my back and got them stuck in between my legs. I couldn't get the other one over. So I know what it's like to piss on yourself and what it is to warm up, right? It's sad, man. But that's what it is, man. And today, really what we're talking about is you, a man, a woman, an adult, a father, a mother, a parent. Parents, mothers, adults, fathers, men, women. You're designed to make your own choices, man. But you can be in that same position. A bunch of people wrestling you, tackling you to the ground. And then your life is in limbo, man. What do you mean your life's in limbo, Chad? It's in limbo, man, because it gets so bad and so hurtful that you feel like you can't do this shit no more, man. That you want to give up. That you're like, man, I'm going to check out, man. I'm not with this shit, man. I'm not living my life like this, man. Or your life could be in limbo because there's been plenty of dudes that have been restrained by cops that have died. Moral of the story is what? You're a man. Make your own decisions. Let today be the day that you're a father. Let today be the day that you're a mother. Let today be the day that eight, nine, ten men are not going to rush you in a cell and shackle you and take you out screaming and wailing, hoping that someone will help you because you're so discombobulated right now, you don't even understand that there's no one here to help you, man. This is it. There is no help. <laughs> the cops are the only people there, man. The warden, they're all in on that shit, man. They got to contact the warden when they do that stuff. The warden says, I'm authorizing it. Show them who the boss is. I've been in prisons where the cops and the warden are like, we're going to show them who the boss is. We're going to be as nasty as we can be. We're going to treat them like shit. Go ahead and do it, man. Today's the day, man. And you know what? You should go back and rewatch that portion of the video. And think about that, man. And tell me what your heart feels like, man. Comment on it. Because there are times when I watch videos and, and stuff like that where it does hurt me, man. It hurts me because I've been there, man. And sometimes you relive it, man. Sometimes you experience it. Sometimes you remember what it was like, man, where no one would help you, man. And you just wanted some help. Blood on the Razor Wire TV. With respect. Until tomorrow, we're out. <laughs>